So in this article, this guy, I, I'm giving you information from having read this article carefully and showing the flaws of, the, uh, of his thinking right from the beginning of this article. And all my commentaries are in brackets. I didn't realize that I can't produce a YouTube where it shows the different color fonts. It don't, it's only one color. So as the evidence is shown, this guy says, nature is filled with examples of precursors to the flagellum that are indeed missing a part and yet are fully functional. Like the dolphin, which involved, evolved into a human being. Of course, they're both here on the planet, and we have similar parts. And some of the systems that the dolphin has, like the, in the blood clotting system, they have fewer components, yet they work. He's a fish! Ah, hey, mammal, a fish! I'm a human being! We have similar parts. You can look at a car, right? Some of the cars that are basic, functional, not luxury cars, don't have as many parts for certain systems that other cars do. I mean, some cars have eight cylinders. Others have six. Others have four. Well, wait a minute. We have electric cars. They operate. Now, the electric cars evolved from or into those Rolls Royces, right? The electric cars came... No, they have just fewer parts, but similar systems. Most of those cars have four tires. Some have three. Remember, there are some cars out there. They started being popular like tricycles. Weird looking. Well, there. See, it's missing a part. It's still working. It's a different species car. You can't compare apples and oranges. That's what he's doing here. And I, so I say, not proved because a system in one species might be different from a system in another. That's what I'm saying. You got your tricycle car. Hey, it's still working. It's a different species car. Not proved because a system in one species might be different from a system in another and are thereby not interchangeable. Ab, have you actually tested your hypothesis by taking out a part and replacing it with a less complex part in a particular item? Yeah, just... Just take out uh, an, uh, a, a, a tire, a wheel, from a Rolls Royce. Right? Take it out. It doesn't function. It'll crash. It'll lean over and go boom. Right? Because a Rolls Royce is different from that tricycle car. That's so basic in their thinking. Is that their best shot? This is like arguing in a bar. Nonsense. Not proved because a system in one species might be different from a system in another and are thereby not interchangeable. Have you actually tested your hypothesis by taking out a part and replacing it with a less complex part that appears to be of similar design, less a few components, and then observing if the species still performs as it did? Answer, no. Functional enough, in some cases, to pose a serious threat to human life. So, for example, you take somebody that's a human and give them a functional circulatory system of the dolphin. A human's going to die. He says functional enough, but evidently not in that particular species if you do that. The point is that within that particular species that you have observed, with a more complex system of locomotion, you have not observed to have the less complex system from another species that provides a toxic delivery system instead, an entirely different function. Yeah, see, they showed something similar. But one, in one species, that same mechanism in, in uh, uh, microscopic uh, science uses a, is it to d uh, deliver toxic this uh, system to toxicity toxic uh, items substances out of its system but the other one delivers uses it for locomotion similar design you know but you can't take that out then it would die of its poison so you do not know if the bacteria would actually function properly or not having not actually tested it in real life you just, you're just guessing. 
also the toxic bacterium might not function with a more complex system of locomotion either. You're just guessing again. Yeah, give it the more advanced system of the other bacteria that uses it for locomotion, and this one uses it to get rid of toxics. You're just guessing again. Perhaps the missing component observed in the first bacteria was required for some function in the first species that was not observed functioning via your investigation, hence viewed by you as not required in the second species that did not have that part. I look at a, uh, uh, a Rolls-Royce, right? And it doesn't have a certain part. It's not needed. It's a different species. You take away the tire to try to say, well, you know, that, uh, that, that Rolls-Royce can function like that tricycle car. And that, Ro Lo that the Rolls-Royce, which is more complex, won't function. So somebody had to put all four tires on it so it could function. So you're just guessing. You did not speculate that your scientific investigation addressed these all-important issues. No facts. No actual scientific experiments. In any case, getting all those parts together in that first species, in the manner in which they were observed, presents a problem to do that over time and yet have that species function the way it was observed functioning, i.e., it nevertheless is irreducibly complex and demands an intelligent designer relative to at least that one species. But the scope of your investigation may not be applicable to all species. See, but if there is an intelligent designer, it stands to reason that being that intelligent, he is creator of all the species in a short, convenient, and amazing period of time. So you can't rule out an intelligent designer no matter what your argument is. Because an intelligent designer that's capable of designing these things and producing them, if he exists, would work. Right? We don't have to know or be around an intelligent designer. He might be out in the shop someplace. Maybe in heaven. The type 3 secretory apparatus. In the popular imagination, Bacteria are germs, tiny microscopic bugs that make us sick. Microbiologists smile at that generalization, knowing that most bacteria are perfectly benign and many are beneficial, even essential to human life. Nonetheless, that's a little sarcastic. What are you saying here? Give me an experiment. You're just doing dialogue like you're in a bar trying to put down one baseball team over another. Nonetheless, there are indeed bacteria that produce diseases ranging from the mildly unpleasant to the truly dangerous. Pathogenic or disease-causing bacteria threaten the organisms they infect in a variety of ways, one of which is to produce poisons and inject them directly into the cells of the body. Once inside, these toxins break down and destroy the host cells, producing illness, tissue dam damage, and sometimes even death. So in order to carry out this diabolical work, bacteria must not only produce the pro protein toxins that bring about the demise of their hosts, but they must efficiently inject them across the cell membranes and into the cells of their hosts. They do this by me means of any number of specialized protein secretory systems. One, known as the type 3 secretory system, TTSS, allows gram-negative bacteria to translocate proteins directly into the cytoplasm of the host cell. The proteins transferred through the TTSS include a variety of truly dangerous molecules, some of which are known as virulence factors and are directly responsible for the pathogenic activity of some of the most deadly bacteria in existence. And <clears throat> so what? At first glance, the existence of the TTSS, a nasty little device, okay, now we're getting someplace, that allows bacteria to inject these toxins through the cell membranes of its unsuspecting hosts would seem to have little to do with the flagellum. However, molecular studies of proteins in the TTSS have revealed the surprising fact. The proteins of the TTSS are directly homo homologous to the proteins of the basal portion of the bacterial flagellum, as there's a figure he shows here, but we can't show it on the, I can't produce it on, on my YouTube. These homo homologies extend to a cluster of closely associated proteins found in both of these molecular machines. On the basis of these homologies, it has argued that the flagellum itself should be regarded as type 3 secretory system. Extending such studies with a detailed comparison of the proteins associated with both systems, Azawa has seconded this suggestion. He's a scientist. 
noting that the two systems consist of homologous component parts, proteins, similarity, they say, with common psych psychochemical properties. It is now clear, therefore, that a smaller subset of the full complement of proteins in the flagellum makes up the functional transmembrane portion of the TTSS. He's describing this mechanism as if it might be a, a carburetor, a complex carburetor in a Rolls Royce, as opposed to an electric car, which has none, or a, 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 a more simple car that also has a, uh, a, uh, a carburetor. And here's a picture of it. I wish I could show it to you on the uh, protein. Uh, the, on my, uh... So, in the figure, there are extensive homologies between type 3 secretory proteins and proteins involved in export in the basal region of the bacterial flagellum. These homologies just demonstrate that the bacterial flagellum is not irreducibly complex. Okay. Getting real complicated. But I'm, I'm seeing what he's doing. He's looking at one mechanism in one species that works pretty well in a more complex way. And it's not in another one. So, my answer, they do not demonstrate that the bacteria flagellum is not irreducibly complex because there are two species involved in your investigation where you were presupposing one system in one species is capable of operating with a second species, replacing a more complex system and functioning perfectly well within that species for the function that the more complex system was performing. Yeah, like you take a simple carburetor in a simple car and you put it into a Rolls Royce. Huh, you think it's going to work? I don't think so. And I say, not only that, but or you offer a different function which would obfuscate the first function, which was locomotion, see, which would cause the rapid demise of the species. You know, if, if for example, you had a lower... A horsepower engine in a simpler car and you put it in a Rolls Royce it'll still get there no it won't you know and it's similar components and it appears you have not tested this hypothesis just because you might observe a simpler transmission in a functioning Ford there goes with components that are the same as in a Toyota which has a more complex transmission with more components this does not then lead to the conclusion that the simpler transmission would work as well in the Toyota unless you properly test this hypothesis. So the Toyota is not going to operate. Now, if uh, the species doesn't operate, it dies. Well, the Toyota is not going to sell very few, very many. So the, the whole production system in the Toyota factory, until it corrects uh, the problem of putting in a simpler carburetor in it, it won't sell and it won't function. Therefore, Toyota dies. So the Ford might be similar in design relative to a number of components identical to those in the Toyota, but you do not have sufficient you do not have sufficient evidence that the simpler transmission in the Ford could perform the same or another kind of function in the more complex Toyota, such as a carburetor. Oh, I did mention that. I didn't know that. This point was never thoroughly tested. Besides that, another function would leave the Toyota without a transmission, leading to its rapid demise. The overall complexity of the Ford versus the Toyota uh, and how all of its components function together and perform all of the functions <coughs> was not investigated. After all, Ford is one species and Toyota is another. So the evidence of whether or not a life form was created by an intelligent designer or evolved from another other life forms is scientifically dependent by and large upon that original life form, not upon another species from which one is guessing it evolved into from, which has a different history and existence, and especially not if the species has significant differences from the original species. One, the flagellum was used to produce toxins over here. The other it was used for locomotion. That's not going to work. So, which most species do have significant differences. Cherry-picking features without presenting detailed evidence from one species without connecting the dots of evidence to another species is hardly scientific. Two or more species that are of similar design may well have been created by an intelligent designer with significant yet original differences, as opposed to evolving from a common ancestor in a non-identical manner. Random way. Given enough time, 
We have a dysfunctioning 